Rick B's daily vlogs. Another driving vlog. Rain cleared up. It's a nice, nice sunny day here in San Francisco. But now we're not going to talk about areas that I'm going to talk about or drive through. You're just going to see me driving just because that's all I can do when I vlog. But I want to talk about something that bothered me a couple weeks ago. It bothered me even more yesterday. So let's go dive in. Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers game versus Carson Wentz and the Indianapolis Colts. So let's get this started. interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Welcome everyone, it's my daily vlog channel, Eric B's Daily Vlogs. Driving around again, just type of vlog I'm going to do for a while till I get back into the swing of things, but today's a different topic, usually go around. I'm still going to show you the areas that I'm driving around, I'm still going to show you guys, share the areas that I'm at. I'm in the Westlake area right now, um, Lake Merced area, pretty much the area that I'm in. But I want to dive in a little bit on the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan. I posted something yesterday on Instagram that I shared it on Facebook, shared it on Twitter. You know how you can do all that, right? You can share your tweets on Facebook, Instagram, and all that. So I did that yesterday, and I said, is Kyle Shanahan's play calling frustrating me, or is it, or is it frustrating anyone else? So pretty much, I just shared how I felt about Kyle Shanahan and his play calling. And sure enough, I get a lot of people on Twitter, on Instagram, who's bashing me, asking me like, are you a coach? Do you know how to coach? Have you ever coached before? Coach high school football, you guys know that. You guys know I've coached high school football. You guys know that I know a little thing about football here and there. Enough to where I'm a couch coach, and if I see a certain play that's not right, I get really frustrated and I'll call out the coach. This car next to me is like, come on, you dumbass, you're driving a Porsche. Let me fucking get in here. Jeez. Anyways, he's, um, he's been our coach for the past, what, five years? They gave him another extension, right? And we've had Jimmy G healthy for how many times in the five years that, that Kyle Shannon's been here? <clears throat> we pretty much sold the farm to get Trey Lance. And when I say sold the farm, we gave up draft picks after draft picks to get Trey Lance. All right, Trey Lance is hurt. Wow, check this out. I was trying to say check this out because I was trying to get the waves and the waves was pretty pretty crazy over here on Grand Highway, but um, wasn't able to get it in time. So yeah, so anyways, we pretty much gave up the farm. We gave up draft picks high draft picks mind that to get trey lance all right i understand the whole rookie process i understand that you know you don't you don't play the rookie right away you you make sure that he's ready i understand all that you know like i said i'm not a head coach in the nfl but i understand the process of what it's like to be a coach in the nfl sorry for the finger I'm trying to push something out something in but I understand all that. I understand why you got to take your time, why you got to make sure he's ready to be part of the NFL roster. I understand you don't put him in right away. But we've had Jimmy G for how many seasons now? He shows us that he cannot be accountable when it comes to certain things. Um, you know, Jimmy G is a good quarterback when he's dumping the ball five to six yards. He's good. He's perfect when it comes to that. When it comes to dumping the ball five and five yards, letting Ayuk, letting, you know, um, Debo, letting them do all the work. He's perfect with that. Every now and then he'll get lucky with a deep ball threat. Every now and then he'll throw the ball downfield and it's a pretty good deep ball threat. Every now and then, like I said. But sometimes... There's certain plays where you want a quarterback to go downfield. You want a quarterback to go throw the ball downfield, score a nice touchdown for you. You know, you grew up in San Francisco. We grew up in the Montana, Mount, Montana Young era. Everyone always brings that up. 
we grew up where Montana would throw to Rice, Jerry, you know, Jerry would catch it, run the ball down, Steve Young would do the same thing. You know, we grew up, and, and when I say we, there's a bunch of you guys out there who knows exactly what I'm talking about. We grew up watching downfield football. The West Coast offense was a run and gun offense where you would run the ball, you would throw quick slants, or you would throw the ball downfield. You know, Bill Walsh was notorious for that kind of offense. And that's the kind of offense that we got used to. All right, Bill Walsh is not coaching anymore. Totally understand. But they still kind of have that mentality. When we had all the different coaches that we had, you know, from, God, who I don't even remember who we had. That's how bad it is. Chip Kelly came in for a while. Um, Singletary came in for a while. They all had the same concept of bringing this concept of old school football back. Singletary was, I, I thought he was going to do good. I really prayed for him and I wanted him to do good. Chip Kelly, I thought, was going to do good because he did well in Philadelphia. And he's doing well right now in UCLA. He's showing UCLA that, hey, I can do this college offense and do this well. So I thought Chip Kelly would do good for the 49ers. He didn't. One season, he was done. So they went through this whole carousel of coaches and said, okay, who are we going to bring in? Who do we want to bring in? Um, Kyle Shanahan was the offensive coordinator for Atlanta. It's the year that Atlanta went to the Super Bowl and blew a was a 28-point lead against New England. New England ends up coming back, winning the game. So they decided, let's get Kyle Shanahan over here. Um, John Lynch was the new GM. John Lynch says, let's bring, you know, let's bring who we can to help this team. All right, cool. We were all we were all sold for it, right? Um, at the time, I forgot who our quarterback was. It wasn't, it wasn't Kaepernick. Um, it wasn't Alex Smith. So I forgot who the quarterback was at the time. Traded for Garoppolo. We got Garoppolo in here. And Garoppolo was supposed to be the heir apparent to Tom Brady in New England, right? He was supposed to be the one that was going to save New England once Tom Brady retires. Of course, everybody knows, 40-something years old right now, Tom Brady's still playing football, which, you know, hey, to each his own if that's what he wants to do. So Jimmy G comes in, heir apparent, is gonna take this Niners to the promised land. Kyle Shanahan, the offensive genius that he is, you know, good mastermind when it comes to play calling, was gonna bring us to where we needed to go. Took a couple seasons, Jimmy's first season, full season, because you remember he came in towards the end of the season, um, won the last four or five games. And then came in the first full season, I think it was week three, he blew out his knee going against Kansas City because he's trying to get extra yardage. I mean, that's what a quarterback does. Quarterback will try to get extra yardage. Can't blame him for that. He did what he had to do. Blew his knee, tore his knee out. Uh, we sat behind, you know, the Nick Mullins, CJ Beathard. We sat behind those guys for a while. We thought they were going to do good. Um, CJ Beathard ended up becoming not the best. CJ uh, Mullins was okay, but you can tell they were just backup quarterbacks. All right. Fine. You know, let's let's you know, let's let this season pretty much go. It's pretty much washed up. Jimmy G tore ACL. All right. Following season he comes back. And he wasn't the same Jimmy G. It wasn't the same Jimmy G. Jimmy G ends up I don't want to say playing scared. But of course, you know, you come back from an ACL injury and a lot of you guys are going to be like, have you ever had an ACL injury before? No, I haven't. I haven't had an ACL injury before. But I know having an ACL injury is painful. And I know when you're coming back from any kind of injury, ACL, MCL, Achilles, I know that's in the back of your mind. I know you're thinking about that every hit you take. I know that's what you're thinking about. So Jimmy G comes back and he's not you know, 100%, or at least he's playing like we thought was playing scared. Do you guys remember David Carr? David Carr was uh, Derek Carr's brother, played for Houston. Um, played for Houston, got sacked so many times that when he became the San Francisco 49ers quarterback, everybody said David Carr is afraid of his own shadow because he got sacked so many times, which was true. It was true, this poor guy got hit so many times that whenever somebody came to sack him or came close to sack him, 
he buckled down. He was afraid to get hit. And if you're a quarterback that got hit a lot, you're afraid to get hit. Totally understandable. So that's pretty much what happened to David Carr. So we get Jimmy G back after he tears his ACL. Comes back. We expect him to do well. Again, he's, you know, again, afraid. He was he didn't want to get hit. Totally understandable for Jimmy G. Gets injured again. I get, and then he was out. And it wasn't his ACL. Something happened. I get a bruised ribs or something like that. He gets injured again. Out for, I don't know, the rest of the season or whatever the season was. Okay, so he's gone. Now we're coming into this season. It was a COVID season. You know, football wasn't really worth watching anymore. So, again, the 49ers traded everything that they could to get a number one pick quarterback. You had your choice between Justin Fields, Mac Jones, um, uh, Trey Lance, uh, you know, because... Because Trevor Lawrence and that other guy was going one and two. And so we weren't going to get them unless we made a remarkable trade to try to get them, which I don't think the Niners was trying to do. So rumors had it they were going to get Mac Jones, but they don't get Mac Jones and they get, end up getting Trey Lance. Trey Lance is not part of our team. He's a rookie. He needs to learn behind Jimmy G. How can you learn behind Jimmy G when you're always injured? Week three, was it week three where the backup tight end threw a reverse pass to Jimmy G because it was one of those flea flickers I forgot what what the play was called it was a flea flicker and Jimmy G kind of just reached up high to catch the ball and hurt his calf he hurts his calf pulled the calf muscle he's out two to three weeks they said two to three weeks here comes Trey Lance coming in the following week. Trey Lance is in the game. And this is when I started questioning the play calling of Kyle Shanahan. Everyone says he's a genius. Everyone says he does all this. There's a lot of motions in his offense. There's a lot of these things that he has to do in his offense that it's just not a regular football game anymore. It's not just run down the field, get open. It's one of those yeah, it's not, it's not as easy as we think it is, right? Kyle Shanahan's offense is complicated. There's a lot of motions involved. And there's a lot of players that don't want to play for Kyle Shanahan. We had Emmanuel Sanders, who was here for the 49ers. And they could have re-signed him. And he said, I don't want to play for Kyle Shanahan. We wondered, why didn't you want to play for Kyle Shanahan? You just came and pretty much, you know, won the Super Bowl for us. If... Jimmy Garoppolo threw that pass and he caught it and he said he didn't want to come back we we're wondering why why don't you want to come back you know we could easily go back to the Super Bowl then we find out why he says Kyle Shanahan's offense is too complicated the routes are different you know there's all these motions that a wide receiver have to do all right I get it it's not your basic you know run out to the flat run out to the post it's not your basic offense like that it's the more complicated style offense so what is wrong with Kyle Shanahan's play calling? What's the number one reason why his play calling is the way it is? Complicated? Yes. That week we played Arizona. You had a running quarterback for North Dakota State led the team in passing and rushing, Trey Lance. He's more mobile than Jimmy G. I don't know if he's as accurate as Jimmy G. Not Well, we don't know yet because he hasn't really proved anything in the NFL. Fourth and one. Fourth and one. Fourth and one. Mind you, you have a running quarterback. You got a good quarterback that can scramble. Kyle Shanahan calls a play where you see that they're getting ready to blitz. They're getting ready to blitz. They smash the line. They, you know, they, they, they're ready to come blitz. They're... They're coming in there. They're going to do everything they can to stop this fourth down play. They're going to do everything they can. Fourth and one. Instead of making Trey Lance go out and rush the ball on the outside where you see all eight men was on the line. They were coming in the blitz. What does he do? He hands it to the fullback. Not check. I forget who the guy was. 
He hands it to them for a loss of two yards. A loss of two yards. What kind of play calling is that that you're going to call that? So that play started making me suspect to the way Kyle Shanahan is calling the offense. Is he not care anymore? Is he trying to hide his hand and not show everybody what he has for Trey Lance? I mean, what's the deal? What's going on? Whatever you're doing, whatever you're trying to hide, whatever you're trying not to show us or show the next team that you're playing against, you know, and I understand this is all like, you know, card games, poker face. You're not trying to show them what you have, not trying to show them your hand. I understand all that. I understand. Like, trust me, I'm not naive when it comes to football. You know, I know my sense of football. I got, again, I got bashed on Twitter asking me if I'm a head coach for some NFL team. You know, why do I know more than he does? I don't. I'm a high school football defensive coordinator. I don't know more than football. But I know enough that if you got eight men on the box and they're going to blitz and you see that they're going to blitz and you have a mobile quarterback like Trey Lance, that I would make him run that outside. I would make him run the outside. I would make him get that first down. You know, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Murray, when it comes to these plays, knows exactly how to do what they're supposed to do. That's the kind of quarterback skills they're supposed to be doing. Because the offensive coordinator lets them know, hey, if it's not there, find a way. Find a way. Trey Lance did well in Arizona because of one reason and one reason only. His dad told him, play your game. No, you're, you're in the NFL for a reason. Play your game. Play your game smart. So Trey Lance, out of some of the plays that was given to him by, by Kyle Shanahan, decided and said, you know what? I'm better off doing this myself. This is the play that I'm going to do. Screw this play calling from, you know, from Kyle Shanahan, I'm gonna do it this way. So he did, which was cool because it made me realize, all right, if you're gonna sit here, you're gonna grow up, that's a good thing, that's perfect. Do what you gotta do, that's fine. Kyle Shanahan's a good offensive coordinator. He can run good play calls, but a lot of his play calling, when it comes to an easy play like fourth down, He's awesome when it comes to like first and 10. First and 10, we already know he's going to run a slant. He's going to do some kind of something. We already know he's going to be good when it comes to first and 10. When it comes to short yardage, red zone, his play calling starts to diminish. You start to wonder why he's calling that play. You start to wonder, why are you calling this play when it shouldn't be called. It should be an easier play to be called. You start to wonder that. I start to wonder that. I started to wonder, again, before Arizona's game, he was playing, he was calling some plays that you wondered why you were calling that play. You were wondering why this play was being called. You wondered that. And then there were certain plays in Arizona that made me realize your play calling is not the best. And then last night's game, or if you're watching this, Sunday night's game against Carson Wentz and the Colts. It's Carson Wentz. You know, Philadelphia got rid of him for a reason. But any team that the 49ers play makes the next quarter or makes that opponent quarterback and even that offense look good. You know, they looked good yesterday or Sunday night. They looked like they knew how to play football. They did. They were killing us on the line. They were killing us everywhere else. They knew exactly what they were doing. What do you do? We're going to sit here the rest of the season. I put, I posted a picture on, you can see it right up here. This is the picture that I posted right here. See how it says too soon? Is it too soon? Is it too soon to wear the paper bag over our heads because we're embarrassed to watch our team? Is it too soon? Going to week seven, three and four. They had a bye. I mean, you know, I can't doubt them. I can't, I can't 
flaw them for one game. They played one game. That was, it was raining. It was terrible. Jimmy G was wearing a glove to throw in the rain. You know, they were punching the balls out. Those fumbles. All this stuff that was involved that was the reason why they didn't do well. There was a lot of reasons why they didn't do well. But I don't think... It was Jimmy G's fault on a lot of that stuff. He, I mean, he made stupid throws, which he shouldn't have. Um, I think a lot of it had to do with Kyle Shannon's play calling. I think a lot of that, Kyle Shannon's play calling is too complicated. They're, they rely too much on, you know, these, I don't know what they call the plays. They rely too much on that. Um, so maybe it's time to go a different direction. Is Kyle Shanahan on the hot seat? I don't know. We lost four in a row. We lost four in a row. We start off strong, and then we fall off the cliff, and we lose the game. So, is he on the hot seat? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if he's gone. I wouldn't be. But then you start to wonder, if he's gone, who's the next person, coach, that will come in? Your next question is, who's going to take us to the promised land? Who's going to be that next coach that'll bring us and help someone like Trey Lance be part of the 49ers offense? I don't know. I don't know. Again, my opinion, my opinion only. Don't go on my Twitter. Don't go on my YouTube bashing me saying that you're not a coach. You don't know what it's like to work in the NFL. No, but I would love to. If someone gave me a chance to work in the NFL... I'd be more than happy to come there and play for you guys. I'd be more or work with you guys. I can't play. I'm not, not a kid anymore. But I'd be more than happy to come there and try to be a coach in the NFL. I would. All right, guys. That's my rant for today. My rant for this vlog. I'm done. I'm done. Until next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit me down below on the Patreon Venmo at EricB1642. Um, don't forget to like me on Twitter at EricB1642. Or is that at Eric1642? I don't know. I'll leave the links all down below. Don't forget to like me there. I'm done. I'm done. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm done. I'm going to upload this on my podcast as well. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening on the podcast. The vlog and the podcast is over. Thanks for watching, guys. Vlog's ended. Go in peace. All I can do is sit here and watch the cars go by. Watch them enjoy this nice sunny day that San Francisco finally has after the storm that we had yesterday. Enjoy the weather guys. It's going to be nice for a while. I made this.